So here we have a question with eight different octagons and a star in the middle. This is one of the questions from today's GCSE maths paper and I'm going to show you how to go through it step by step and find the answer. So here's our diagram. I'm going to start by inside the square um sorry the star drawing triangles in on like the pointy bits of the star because finding the area of a star is very difficult so we're going to work step by step in e and kind of split up the star into smaller shapes so it's easy to work with we can add all of the area up together to find out the entire area so first of all we're going to work out the area of the triangle what is the formula for area of a triangle? Base times height times a half or some variation of that. Now we need to find out what our base and height values are. As we can see we've got, if we flip our triangle we've got a base of A and a height of A because both those side lengths are A. So the area of the triangle is going to be A times A times a half. Now this isn't a very nice form so we're just going to try and simplify a bit. A times A is going to just be A squared and we can multiply that by 2 to get 2a squared and put it all over 1. 1 over 2a squared is the area of that small triangle. Now since we have 4 of them, we can just multiply 1 over 2a squared by 4 to get the entire area of those 4 triangles. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to write it as 4 over 1 to make it a bit easier to visualize. Now before I cross multiply. I'm just going to write it because it's not very difficult numbers so we can just simplify it after. The 4 becomes a 2 and the 2 becomes a 1 because we divide by 2 and we end up with 2a squared which is quite nice for the entire area of the four triangles. So the total area of the four triangles equals 2a squared. Let me just clean the board and I'll be right back. So, we know that the area of the four triangles is 2a squared. Now we're going to, we're going to start working on the main bulk of the area of this star. This square right in the middle. We know it's a square because since all the octagons on the outside are of equal length and equal size, we know that this square must also be the same. So we're just going to start by working out this length here. We know that those two sides on the octagon are A, but what is that question mark length that we need to get the entire length? So I'm just showing you the right angle triangle here. Right angle triangles, two lengths we know. To find out the hypotenuse, Pythagoras. We're going to need to use Pythagoras here. What is Pythagoras? If you don't know, there's loads of videos on YouTube and ask your teacher if you want a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What's our a squared value? a squared. <laughs> What's our b squared value? a squared. So a squared plus a squared must equal c squared. Let's simplify this a little bit. a squared plus a squared, that's just going to be 2a squared. 2a squared equals c squared. Now, to get just c, not c squared, we need to square root all of it. So that means c is going to equal... Now, if we square root a, we just a squared we get a, if we square root 2 we get root 2, so I'm just going to write it as a root 2, the nicest form that you can write it. We know that that length there is going to be a root 2, so now we have the entire height of that square, and we know it's a square because the octagons are all the same, so we can just multiply that by itself, so the area of the square is going to equal, we're going to add up all those individual lengths together, so it's going to be, uh, let me just write the formula first, base times height, you should know that, and let's add this up, so it's going to be a plus a, because we've got two a's there, and then we can also add on our a root 2 that we got from earlier, and because we're going to multiply it together, I'm just going to write it again for simplicity, once we've done that, we can sort of tidy it up a little bit. So, a plus a, that's just going to be 2a, two, and we can just leave the a root 2 on the side. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to write it as squared, because you're multiplying the same thing by itself. So now we're going to start expanding these brackets, because 
that's just what we need to do right now. Expand. What? Whenever I expand brackets that are squared, I always just like to write them out in full because it helps me visualize what I'm expanding and make sure I don't make any silly mistakes. 2a times 2a is 4a squared. 2a times a root 2. 2a times a is 2a squared. And we just leave the root 2 on the side because we're multiplying it by the a anyway. And then we've got 2a times a root 2 again. So we could just write the same thing. Don't worry, we'll tidy this up afterwards. So it's going to be 4a squared plus 2a squared root 2 plus we've just got the same thing again 2a squared root 2 and then we've got our final term at the end a root 2 times a root 2 a times a is a squared and root 2 times root 2 is 2 so it's going to be 2a squared now we've just found some like terms 4a squared and 2a squared that's going to be equal 6a squared and we've also got two lots of 2a squared root 2 so it's going to be 4 a squared root 2. So we've gotten, the, we've gotten to this stage now where we've got the most simple expression to show the area of that square. But we, want, we don't want the area of the square, we want the area of the entire star. So remember at the beginning of the video when we worked out the area of those triangles? Now we're just going to add them together. So our total area is going to equal 6a squared plus 4a squared root 2, which is the area of our square. And we're going to add on to that our area of our four triangles, which was 2a squared. Right away, we can notice that we've got some like terms. That's really nice, isn't it? Our 6a squared and our 2a squared, which is 8a squared. And the 4a squared root 2 is on its own. But this isn't in the form that we want. Let me wipe the board and we will be right back. We need it in that form. So, what we're going to do is we have to try and get that form. We see we've got an a squared on the outside of the bracket, so maybe we can factorise by a, right? Look, we've got a squared in common on both of the terms. So, I'm just going to put the rest of the stuff in the brackets. 4 root 2 plus 8 and the a squared on the outside of the bracket. I'm putting on the right because that's how it is written in the question. But... Look, we've got 8 plus 4 root 2 in our brackets. We need 2 plus root 2. So we can divide, not divide, that's a common mistake. We can factorise by 4. Factor of 4 is common in 8 and 4 root 2. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 root 2 divided by 4 is just root 2. And we've got a squared on the end. And as you can see, these are equivalent statements. And the p corresponds to our 4. And that leads us to the conclusion that our p equals 4. That is our final answer. p equals 4, and that is the final form. Thanks for watching.